The main reason that most people's MCAT score is stuck or they can't increase, it has nothing to do with content or sciences or like the perfect strategy. Most of the time, people's biggest problem is themselves or their surrounding. And I'll prove it to you in this video. My name is John. I'm a third year medical student. I took the MCAT a few years ago. I've been tutoring it ever since. And now I make free videos so that we can share what's behind some of those expensive paywalls at the big companies. So let's start off with just some really basic math. The average pre-med student studies 200 to 300 hours for the MCAT and then the average student scores a 500. Now you and I both know that that 500 is not gonna get you into medical school. So why do you chase what the average student does? The average student is trying to study 200 hours to make a 500, why not double it? So that's the first thing that's under your control is study more, study longer hours. Give yourself more time to study more. Really, 200 hours seems like a lot, but it's if you study for 40 hours a week, that's five weeks. If you study for 80 hours a week, which is what you'll be working whenever you're a resident, well, then you can knock it out in two and a half weeks. Double that, you can knock out 400 hours in five weeks if you're really getting it at 80 hours a week. When you're a third year medical student, that's probably about the amount of time that you'll be spending on like school activities as well. Whenever you're spending, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day doing clinical rounds and you come home and study for a few more hours a day. So that's tip number one, study more. The second thing that you're not doing that's causing you to be stuck is you're not taking enough practice questions. The average student takes four practice tests. That's probably fine if you only want to increase like, you know, four or five, six points from your baseline. But if you're wanting to jump 10, 15, 20 points, you're gonna need a lot more practice than that. You have to learn all the sciences, of course. Then you also have to get the reps in. When I studied for the exam, I took 15 and it sucked, but it was worth it. So exhaust all of those practice exams that you can find, exhaust all of the question banks like UWorld that you can find. As long as you're getting something from those questions, then they are worth it. But again, the average student takes three or four and they make a 500. Don't be the average student. Tip number three, be more active in your studying. You gotta quit just trying to check the boxes. Yes, a big theme of this video is that you've got to do the work and you've got to put in more effort, but it's not just all about checking the boxes. You have to actually be engaged throughout that learning process. And that means if you come across a word that you don't know and when you you're practicing cars, look up the definition. Or if you are studying and you miss a question in the more practice questions that we're gonna be taking now, well, if you didn't know the science, you should probably go and learn the science instead of just saying, oh, well, I'll, I'll remember that. You probably won't. So be more active. Take ownership of the mistakes that you make when you're studying and be grateful for them. You learn a lot more when you miss a question than you do whenever you get one right. Be thankful for missed questions because it teaches you an area of improvement so that you don't make that mistake on test day. This is doubly true for the cars section. A lot of people view it as like magic. They're like, I can't understand how to improve at it. The biggest thing you need to improve at is your reading comprehension. So if you see a word that you don't know the definition of, well, you should probably look it up. Or if you're confused about the how a, a sentence is phrased, well, you should probably spend some time thinking on it and meditating on how the author was trying to bring forward their viewpoint. Then one of the top predictors for MCAT performance is whether English is your first language or whether you are proficient in English. And this is something that as a tutor, I've dealt with a lot of students. Um, I have had a lot of students that were English as second language and, and very rural students. And English is not something that the rural students like myself are proficient at. We use words like y'all and ain't. Let me tell you something, y'all. Those ain't on the MCAT. So you really need to learn to speak the language. You need to learn to speak a little bit more professionally. You need to learn to translate that in your own brain. And that only happens from intentional practice. Be active. Take ownership of your grade. The fourth thing that you need to do is you need to obsess over understanding a science. My goodness, don't just tell yourself you'll memorize the equation for Ohm's law. You need to understand what voltage is. You need to understand all the things that you're actually studying. And if you're new to this channel, then let me tell you, my whole shtick, my whole spiel is that I'm a firm believer that if you have a very nuanced understanding of the high yield sciences and then you take a ton of practice questions, you're probably gonna make a 510 or higher. But that requires an absolute obsession and dedication with knowing those high yield sciences and understanding how they apply. And an approach like that translates really well to medical school as well. And the fifth thing that I wanna to talk to you about is that this time in your life is not going to be like others. This time when you're studying for the MCAT is an unbalanced time. And for anybody that is looking for permission from somebody on the internet to be unbalanced because they're going home to study over Christmas break or maybe summer's coming up or maybe you have a, a difficult semester and, and, and you 
want to hang out with friends or something like that, you feel guilty for blowing people off. For anybody that's looking for permission to do it, you can do this. You absolutely can do it. I just ran into one of my old students at a restaurant the other day, and he was there with his now fiance, and I had never met her, but I was talking to them, and she told me, yeah, that semester, me and you were his only friend. She said it kind of jokingly, but it struck home with me because now he's in medical school, and he had really struggled with the MCAT beforehand. So he was unbalanced. That's why he got into medical school. I became unbalanced. It helped me get into medical school. I'm not telling you to sacrifice you know, your mental health, but if you're looking for permission to be a little bit unbalanced for a few months, just so that you can get medical school, you know, check the MCAT off. This is your permission. It's okay, and it is transient. And also, most of medicine, most of your training requires you to be unbalanced. If you think you can only work 40 hours a week, 50, 60, 70, 80, this is not the right career for you because you are required to work those hours to get through residency. It's not something that I love, but it's also not something that's changing. So in summary, the main reason your MCAT score is not improving is because it's really hard. You need to be studying more. The average student studies 200 hours, you should study 400. The average student takes four practice exams, you should take 10. The average student passively studies, you should actively study. And the average student allows the world and these things that distract from their ambitions to pull them away from studying. And then the average student also feels guilty while they're trying to enjoy themselves. So it's okay to be a little bit unbalanced. It's okay to dedicate yourself to studying 10 hours a day. And that, that might look like early mornings or late nights to you like it did to me. But the good news is that once you get your crap done, you can truly enjoy your time off. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this did not come off as like condescending or judgmental. I'm, I'm really only telling you the things that I've done to get my MCAT score up. If you've learned something, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and please share this with a friend. It's very important to me for your fellow students, your fellow future colleagues and doctors, as well as my residency application that this channel grows. So please subscribe, please share it with your friends, your pre-med advisors, and I will see you in the next one.